Hello team, welcome to our mainframe classes. So today we are going to discuss a very important concept in the mainframe that is DB2 architecture. So it's related to our DB2. So before starting this video, I would like to please like, share and subscribe this channel. And uh, I request you if you have any specific topic and you have any doubt, please mention in the comment box. So this will help us to understand. And uh, if you want any specific topic, so also please ping in the comment box. So thank you all. And uh, let's start with today's topic. So this is the agenda which we covered in this video. So first we will discuss about the DB2 architecture. Next we will going to discuss about the address spaces. So in DB2 generally we have the four types of address spaces. So we will discuss in detail in this video. Next we will understand what is the DB2 object and outline DB2 login process and we will discuss about the database. So um, we will focus on two database that is very important. First one is the DSN DB06 that is the DB2 catalog and uh, second one is the directory that is DSN DB01. Also, we'll try to understand what is GPOM parameters in DB2 and explain the DB2 connection process. So, first one is the DB2 component. So, what is the major component which used in the DB2? So, generally, DB2 contains a large number of internal components. So, these uh, could be grouped according to their functionality into four groups or major components. So, what are the components? So, first one is the system services. Second one is the locking services. Third is the database services. And last one is the distributed data facility that is DDF. So, each of these components run in the separate operating system or we called in the address spaces. So, first one is the system services. So, system services controls the connections to other MVS subsystems running under the different address spaces like uh, KICS or TSO. Also, system services handles system startup and shutdown process. Also, it manages the system log. So, system log is the another important concept in the mainframe. So generally DB2 uses two active log data set and uh, when one active log data set is full it automatically switches to other logs or we called as uh, while the secondary log data set so like uh, one one backup is there like we called as archive log which uh, is usually categorized in the mainframe and uh, DB2 maintains two copies of both active log data set and archive log data set. And uh, also system services allocates a thread at the beginning of program, program execution and uh, it monitors the process of execution. So second one is the locking services. So locking services are we called as IRLM. So IRLM that means it's an inter-system resource lock manager. So IRLM is responsible for concurrent access to database data through its locking and deadlock resolving mechanism. So next one is the database services. So database services are responsible for manipulation of DB2 data structure also, it is responsible for storage, retrieval and update of database data and it is used to preparation of application programs for execution and also it's allocating the resources and subsequent execution of those programs. So, database services component is responsible for execution of SQL and management of buffer. So database services has the various component that implement the functions such as pre-compiler, bind, runtime supervisor, data manager, buffer manager, environmental descriptor manager and etc. So let's understand one by one. So what is pre-compiler? So in pre-compiler, 
we use some input we give input to the precompiler also we receive output and there is some process so let's understand about the precompiler so when we talk about input so we can give source program written in the host language in host language that means it's in a cobol or a pli so it is used like a input next output so output are the modified source program or dbrf so what is the process behind the precompiler so precompiler strips out all the embedded sql statement from the host language program host language program that means cobol or pli and also it replaces them with the host language with the call statement so there is one statement we called as the call statement and it's using to using the extracted sql statements and construct a database request module that is called dbrm so this is the process behind the precompiler so precompiler inserted a call statement so call statements issues a call to the db2 language interface module next one is the bind so for the input we provide like source dbrm constructed by the precompiler and we got output package and the application plan and what is the process so process of bind like uh, there are two distinct stages in which bind can be used apart from that bind compiles the dbrms into a package also it then compile a list of packages into an application plan and the package and the application plan are stored in the directory and a package is a compiled from the database request so what is the package so package contains a complete information regarding the runtime access path or we called as access strategy of the sql statement in the dbrm so bind is really an optimizing compiler and bind perform the compilation in the four steps so first is the syntax checking second one is the optimization so in optimization bind optimizer choose the optimum access path for the database statistics stores in the various catalog table so next one is the run stat so run stat is provided like it's a special utility and it's provided for gathering this statistics for example the optimizer may choose to have a sequential table scan instead of using an index defined on the table next is the package generation and last one is the authorization checking so bind checks that owner of bind is allowed to perform the operations request in the sql statement that constitute the dbrm to be a bound so let's understand what is the runtime supervisor so runtime supervisor it's a job is to oversee the running of the application program when the runtime supervisor comes across an sql statement it load the corresponding application plan and as per the plan request the data manager to perform the appropriate operations so next one is the data manager so data manager performs functions such as search retrieval and update of data also it's maintain the index next is the buffer manager so buffer manager is responsible for the physical transfer of data between dash d and virtual memory also it kept the frequently read and update pages in the main memory to maintain minimize the physical input outputs also buffer manager like there is the buffer pages that are least recently used or in short we called as lru are swapped out first and it uses techniques such as read ahead buffering for the better performance that's way it's used the buffer manager
so there is the another concept of buffer manager like uh, if the requested application plan is not present in the buffer pool at runtime so buffer manager load the plan and passes control to the environment descriptor manager so there is another term environment descriptor manager so what is environment descriptor manager so the plan is physically stored as a skeletal cursor table or in short we called as skct and a package is called a skeleton package table or skpt.db2 load the copy of this in the edm pool so our next concept of db2 object so what is db2 object uh, so a db2 subsystem consists of several user and system database and uh, a mandatory system database and uh, we called as important system database that is the catalog database or we called as dsn db06 so each database is divided into the table space and index space you already know in table space it contains one or more table and index space is contains the exactly one index and uh, every table space and index space is divided into the set of pages so next a page is also called as a block or unit of physical input output and all index space pages are of 4 kilobyte in size and uh, table space pages are either 4 kilobyte or 32 kilobyte so every table or index is wholly contained in their resp respective table space or index space and every table and all of its associated index are wholly coordinate in the same database so coming to next slide so every index space or table space has an associated storage group so there is another concept of a storage group so a storage group is the collection of one or multiple dash d volumes all of same device type and this storage group can contains object from different database and also object from the same database can span across the multiple storage group within each storage group the space are stored as the vzam vzam that is in a linear data set and db2 space dynamically is expand using free space from the associated storage group so all these things are very important and very important concept under db2